Hi, welcome to another edition of Antique Radio Archaeology. Today we're going to begin the restoration on a 1923 Chelsea Model 102 regenerative receiver. Now, like the Model 101, this one is the basic regenerative receiver, but this one actually includes the amplifier built into the same cabinet. So it's kind of like the Chelsea Model 101 with a Model 111 built into it. So let's take a look at the receiver itself. There wasn't a lot of ads on this one. I don't know that they sold a lot of the models, but this is a rather interesting uh, variation of the Model 101, if you take a look at it. What we have is you have three rheostats, one for the receiver itself and then two for the amplifier section. These real stats use a 5 ohm section and a 20 ohm section, depending on the gauge of microphone wire used. So there's two gauges used in this particular Model 20 real stat. Now, some of the other high quality components include the Model 90 burial coupler. Uh, unfortunately, they only use four of the taps. I don't know why there's six available, but whatever. Uh, there's also a Model 12 condenser used here which has the vernier adjustment. Uh, this burial coupler also has vernier by the way. It's using those real nice model 60 tube sockets and you also have the two model 50 transformers here. So a lot of real high comp quality components are used in this particular design. Now this does have a terminal strip inside and there are some access holes in the back of the receiver itself to get to them. So it eliminates the panel connections. So let's take a look at the schematic itself. Uh, very similar to the Model 1, as you can see here. Model 101, I should say. The uh, output goes into a transformer, which begins the amplifier section here, which has two stages of amplification. Uh, the first transformer passes the audio signal to the grid of tube number two. Now where this gets really interesting is how this takes that output of tube number two. It brings it over here to this telephone jack, which brings it back over here to the next transformer. However, when a phone jack is inserted here, what happens is it disconnects that transformer. And when it does that, it applies that plate over to the phone jack itself. The other side of that phone jack is hitting the B++. So what's happening is you're applying B++ to that plate. It's no longer going through that transformer, so now you have the audio going through the headphones. Another unique feature is as you plug this in, you are applying your A plus voltage to all your filaments. When you do not have a jack in place, there is no A plus being applied to any of the filaments. That's if whether you use the top jack or the bottom jack, either one of those two jacks uh, has to be plugged in in order for this receiver to operate. So the way you turn it on and off is you insert or pull out the jack. So if you are using loudspeaker instead, same concept, you plug it in, the plate for tube number three will be applied to the loudspeaker along with your B++, and that will develop your audio. So that's the basic operation of the 102, which is pretty simple. Now Chelsea couldn't just let you have a 102, they had to give you a 103 as well. Now the 103 is rather neat because it's taking the very front section of the model 102, it's putting a one phone jack and an on off switch, I'll explain why in a second, and it's giving you a built-in loudspeaker. So you can buy the 103, which has the 102, basically, and a loudspeaker. And it's also adding an additional section of amplification. So you're going to have three stages instead of two stages of amplification. That was one of the selling points on this particular model. So if you look here, you can see that 
This section outlined in red is what appears here in the model 103. Uh, they've moved one of the telephone jacks I said before and of course that on off switch. So now schematically the front section is identical. You go you basically have your whole receiver section going into that first transformer, goes into tube two, comes over to the telephone jack. Now here's the big difference. This telephone jack here doesn't do anything uh, as far as power is concerned. It just applies or doesn't apply the voltage to this transformer or to the headphone itself. So when you plug it in, it's basically going to take that uh, plate signal and, and send it to the, to the headphones and disconnect the rest of the amplifier sections by disconnecting this transformer. Now the big difference here is you have an on-off switch and because of the on-off switch, that is how you're going to apply voltage to all the filaments. And if you notice, the filaments are all set up for one rheostat. And if you noticed on the front panel, there weren't any more rheostats. So that makes a lot of sense here. So you just have one rheostat controlling all the tubes at once, which is kind of interesting. Unfortunately, I've never seen one of these. Uh, there, it's an interesting version of this radio. Uh, I would love to see one in real life, but uh, all I've ever seen is one advertisement that had it, so I don't know that they sold very many. So let's take a look at the one we're going to restore here. Now, as you can see, the front plate has some issues uh, aesthetically. The case itself has definite issues. Uh, there's uh, some repairs that are going to be made to it as well as uh, uh, refinishing. So hopefully the operation of the radio is going to be relatively unscathed. I'll know that when I start testing all the components. Uh, and if everything goes as planned, then hopefully all I need to do is just clean up the components and the faceplate for the electrical side of the restoration and then just take care of the cabinet. So. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what needs to be done? Uh, we definitely need to replace some paint on these knobs. So I'm going to clean those up. The set screw here is too long. That's not the right set screw. I need to get that replaced. There's some corrosion here, here. That can be cleaned up. I do want to clean up this face plate, so I'll probably remove everything and do that. Uh, these knobs look pretty good. I'm going to probably just leave those alone, clean them a little. But uh, that part of it looks good. Now, underneath here, there's supposed to be a plate here, regenerative receiver with the patent number, a little brass plate that's missing. I need to see what I can do about that. The case itself has some issues. First of all, if you look right here, you can see that piece is missing. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to see if I can fix that. I don't know if I can or not. I'm going to give it a shot. If I can't, then I'll replace the whole base. Uh, the other thing on the back here, I don't know if you can see it, but that's separated there. That's on the on the cover itself, so not too concerned about that. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look inside. Everything is there. Everything looks good. So I'd say we go ahead and pull the face off of here.
Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and measure these components. Now what I should be seeing is about oh, almost 1K on the primaries of these transformers. 0.96, I'll take that. This one. 0.92, I'll take that. These should be about 5K on the secondaries. 5 to 6K. 6K as for that's not. And that's at uh, 5.84. Okay, we're good. Transformers are good. That's a good thing. That's usually the biggest problem with these. Alright, let's take a look at these potentiometers here. As you know from my last one, I did have a bad potentiometer. So, let me see what we got here. Okay, I should be reading about between 25 and 30 ohms. This is 27 ohms. Let me see I'm at on this one. That one's 22 ohms. I'll take it. That was 23 ohms. All right, I'm good. <laughs> All my pots are good. That's the. That was my biggest concern. Uh, the the capacitor back here seems to be there's no rubbing, so those are good. Same with the the burial coupler. I can check my grid leak here. It's supposed to be according to this, it should be three mega ohms. I'm actually reading about six, that's a little bit high. Yeah, I may need to replace that. And let's see, what's my capacitor here look like? Hmm, 0.129 microfarads. One down here, 0.428 microfarads. Almost microfarad and that should be it. All my components are testing relatively good except for that. That's a little bit high. But uh, okay.
Okay, so I'd really like to uh, do something about these parts. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and break it down. I didn't want to do that at first, but the more I look at it, the more I see. I really want to get these things in this ultrasonic washer. The uh, Some of these other things could be a lot easier cleaned once it's all broke down. So, <sighs> didn't want to do it, but... I think I need to. I just want to get this thing cleaned up properly. And the good thing is I won't have to do too much as far as breakdown.
And here is the final result. Now the next step is going to be filling in the lettering. I went ahead and scribed all the old paint out of there. So There you have it. Alright, so all the parts are cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start reassembling. Um, I think I'm going to start with uh, getting these tube sockets put back in here. And just start to uh, eh, try to plan this thing out a little bit. But I want to put it together and in sections. So my next assembly is going to be the terminal strips. Now I did find another lug here, so uh, I was missing that one. Let's go ahead and get started here.
The next step is going to be the transformers.
So let's go ahead and break down this case real quick. That was a lot tougher than I thought it would be. Okay, so you can see the damage there. You can see where it's missing its plate. So for this corner, first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to try some of this quick wood. It's a, an epoxy type uh, wood filler, but I need to give it something to hold on to. So I'm going to drill some holes, a couple of them, and uh, put some uh, put some nails in it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some shellac on this thing. It's been sitting for 48 hours uh, with the stain on it. And one of the things that I'm going to do this time is every video I kind of go through this process. So I'm just going to start it and then you'll tune in towards the end of it so that we're not repeating the same thing over and over again every video. Save a little bit of time there. But I just want to get this initial coat down.
Alright, so let's go ahead and get this thing reassembled. So it's pretty obvious that it's missing something here. What it's missing is there is a plate that goes there and uh, I am going to be engraving a plate for that purpose so I am going to install that at a later date but uh, for now I'm just going to leave it as is. Now one of the things I really like about this is if you look on the top here you can see numbers carved in there, you can see just all kinds of scratches and dents. Uh, here on the side is a number 7. How well you can see that. Uh, but I wanted to preserve that. It's part of the history of this radio. Let's go ahead and uh, wire this thing up. As you can see we have the terminal strip here. I'm going to start with the antenna connections, come through the pass-through holes in the back. My antenna ground. Okay, I've got my A battery here, 6 volts. One side's going to the outlet ground. The other side is going to go in here. I hook that to my A minus. Okay, here's my A plus. The 6 volt pattern. Now normally the batteries would be in the case here, but just because of my long hookup wires, I'm just going to leave it outside the case. Alright, I got 22 volts off this battery, and I'm tying it to the ground on this battery, or the minus on this battery, so that I'll have 45 volts when I hit the 22 plus on the second on the B plus plus battery. So let's go ahead and get our twenty or B battery minus right here. B battery plus right here. B plus plus is this second battery here. Okay, obviously I've got my tubes in place. Alright, we're ready to fire this thing up. Alright, so I've got a Sonicord speaker right here, which I'm gonna go ahead and use. And it's plugged into a phone jack and I have a set of headphones so we'll start with the headphones and remember as soon as I insert this into the jack it should fire up the radio which it does Something. 
you should be able to hear that. That's my home station. That's the headphones. Wow, this thing's really cranking out. Try it on speaker. Turn that down. That was Hulu by TV, and named especially to Sergeant J. M. Carter and his gang at APO 339, which brings us to that new one by Johnny Mercer. See if we can get another station. Literally help thousands and thousands of owners legally permanently get out of their never ending timeshare fees. They have an A plus uh, rating with the Better Business Bureau. They have over 900 five star testimonials. Their clients know that Lone Star Transfer is the only company they can trust, the only one I trust. All right. And Lone Star so there we got a radio station. I can go back to my music station. So like all restorations, this one had its challenges. And this one was definitely the case. I spent a lot more time on it than I ever imagined. And, uh, you know, it was just a matter of trying to preserve the old look to it without uh, getting too going too overboard. And in that process, it just made it a little more challenging for some reason. But uh, the rest of it was pretty straightforward. It was just a matter of tearing it all down getting all the parts cleaned up and of course uh, reassembling everything but uh, I'm real pleased with the results I, I think it sounds really good and uh, it received really well so uh, this was definitely a success so I hope you enjoyed today's video I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with the next one uh, I have a couple of Chelsea radios in mind but uh, this concludes this restoration hope to see you again next video